Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Learn Something New Every Day. This session is part of a series of free webinars offered every week or two by the Stark Portage Area Computer Consortium, or SPARC for short. SPARC is an information technology center in Northeast Ohio where we support about 30 school districts. However, this webinar is open to everyone and we would like to welcome all the people who have joined us live today who are watching the recording in the future. My name is Anthony, and I'm Technology Integration Specialist at Spark, and I will be your presenter for this session today. My colleague, Eric Kurtz, will be assisting me behind the scenes today. All the resources for today's webinar can be found at tiny.cc slash spark, S-P-A-R-C-C-222. Again, that's tiny.cc slash S-P-A-R-C-C-222. RCC222. And I would encourage you to go to that site if you have not already done so. That link will take you out to our technology integration website where you find all the resources for today's session, including the live video stream, which will become the vi recorded video stream after the session. You'll also find some help guides and information, and you'll also find a session evaluation. We really appreciate you filling up the session evaluation when you're done. That helps us to improve our webinars. And also, if you have anything that you're interested in, please put a suggestion and we will consider for a future webinar. Finally, at the bottom of the page, there's a quiz to take to earn a certificate of attendance for one contact hour. So if you take the quiz and pass it, you'll receive a uh, email with a PDF for one contact hour from the Stark ESC. I would also suggest that you open the link on that page, tiny.cc slash spark222, to the Learn Something New Every Day webpage so you can follow along or you can get to the page by going to the Web Resources Hoarder site page at tiny.cc slash WRH. Again, that's tiny.cc slash WRH. When you get to the home page, you can click on the link to the Learn Something New Every Day page. And you can follow along from there. Also on today's screen, you can see that I have up the professional development schedule for upcoming events. And you'll see that we have additional webinars coming up in the future. Also from this page, you can code to the link that says uh, view past recorded webinars. That'll take you to webinars that we've completed already. There's now over 20 webinars available for you to, to see. Again, on the professional development page, you can also go to the home and go down to where it says subscribe to Sparkline's newsletter. That'll allow you to receive uh, occasional emails letting you know about the latest technology integration information and in upcoming webinars. Finally, if you need to get in touch with us, you can use our contact information under the contact link located at the top of the page. And again, Eric and I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to contact us via email. We'll now start today's session, learn something new every day. And this is going to be one of these sessions where I have a lot of tabs open, and hopefully my computer will be more cooperative than it was earlier today. I'm just going to open up a few slides here first to show you um, again, the link that you can get to the site. And I'm going to show you what you should find when you get to the site and just point out a couple things. Uh, on the site, you will find that there's two ways to get to the Learn Something New Every Day. You can either click on the menu item at the top, or you can click on the Learn Something New Every Day tab at the bottom. And again, the site will look like this, and you can go to the page by clicking on either of these two links. What I've done today is I've taken some screenshots and put them in a, in a Google slideshow and made that available on the website so you can see this um, static page. We'll be going back to the live page in a few minutes, but I just want to show you some things in the static version where it's a little easier to explain them. The first thing I want to show you is at the top of the page, it'll say now with uh, X number of sites. When this screenshot was taken earlier this morning, there was 176 sites. You'll note when we get into the site, there's actually now 177. And I'll talk about that in just a few moments. You'll also notice that there's a little blue line here. 
that is a link to the bottom of the page that asks you to please read important safety notice at the bottom of the page before using any of these sites. And I'll be talking about that in just a moment. As far as the number of sites go, sites come and go every day on the internet, so just as with the rest of the internet, sites on this site will be changed from time to time, and occasionally you might find a dead link. If you ever do, please let me know so I can correct that. I often find additional interesting and hopefully enlightening to visitors new sites, so I will add those to the sites, and you'll see that number will continue to climb. Some sites drastically change their focus and or drop the free content, and this could result in their removal. So a site that was there before may go away if it doesn't match our criteria any longer. Now we're just going to do, go through the disclaimer at the bottom of the page real quick, and I'll just mention a few things about this. Um, again, this is page is provided for informational purposes only. Some activities on these sites could be dangerous for some students and may require adult supervision. Students, if you're in doubt, please ask your parent or teacher before trying any of these activities. Some of the sites may not be appropriate for students of all grades and ages, not because of an inappropriate content necessary, but just not content that matches the student's age. So on one site, it tells you how to shave, and I don't think that's probably appropriate for your kindergartners to try shaving or to try repairing your car. So again, that's what we mean by appropriate for ages. Some of the sites may also contain paid content along with the free materials, but all sites on this page have free materials available. That's why they're included. Although the sites have been reviewed, sites can change, and also the links to other sites or advertisements from these sites may change, and they are not reviewed for content. So please be aware that if an advertisement shows up on the page or a link shows up on the page, that isn't where we intended you to go. And you need to instruct your students in this fact also. Finally, at the bottom of the page, if you find an objectable or inappropriate or potentially dangerous site, please click the link and uh, let us know at Spark. Also, if you, would, if you find a new site that you think may be a good addition to this site, or you have any comments or suggestions, please contact us at the contact information provided at the beginning, and we'll be providing it at the end also. The, site, the site's categories are loosely grouped by category, and although many may overlap their categories. So you might see some sites that are general interest, while they might also be a mathematics site. So I've tried to put them in um, some sort of semblance of order uh, in the chaos. The sites that are related are grouped one above each other in a column. And as you go down the column, the site categories will continue to change. If you move the left to right, again, you'll see different topics. And um, there's a wide variety of sites. But because this site is meant to serve a wide range of users, three subjects have been purposely excluded, religion, politics, and sports, where individuals can have very strong opinions. And that is not the purpose of the site, site to cause arguments or disagreements. So those sites have been purposely left off of the page. I have a couple quick slides here just to show you what I mean about how the sites are categorized. Here's some of the general knowledge and information. Here's some science and STEM. We're just gonna go through these very quickly because we're gonna actually do these live. This is more for your reference later on. And again, we have technology, electronics, mechanical, woodworking, and maintenance. We also have online courses and information, reference materials and calculators. We have a whole section called Big Ideas where we'll talk about in a little more detail in a few minutes, using current events, some personal and etiquette type of sites. We also have many sites on the arts, literature, classics and writing, also music. We have many history and social studies sites, uh, histories and history and social studies, especially geography are some of my favorite hobbies. So I've included a number of sites on that. You also see that we have some sites here for teachers with teacher resources, some math sites. And finally, near the bottom, we have sites on cooking, nature and gardening, crafts and games, web searching, and Google Apps for education. So again, this presentation is available to you from the site, 
so that you can see the static representation of the pages if you're interested. And then also at the bottom, the last page has, again, our, my contact information. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we're actually going to go to the page, and we're going to explore some of the sites today. Close a few extra tabs we don't need here, and we'll jump into the Learn Something New Every Day site. And again, you now know there's 177 sites available. And we're just going to go down. I'm going to open some sites. We're going to take a look what's there today. Things change every day on many of these sites. So they have a topic of the day or topic of the week. Um, general sites in this area of the screen and general sites in the middle area of the screen here um, are good sites to start with. Or if you're just looking for general information or just how to do something. Um, if you go back over 12 years ago, before the, the invention of many of these sites, or the, the, the um, addition of many of these sites to the Internet, there was only a few ways you could find out about things. Uh, you could find someone who was skilled in the activity, and you could ask them to teach you. You might go to the library and do some research and find a book uh, that instructs you on how to do things. And I know I did that a lot as a child. I always loved to go find how-to books in the library. Uh, electronics was one of my favorite hobbies, so I'd always look for new electronics books coming out. The other way that you could find things is in your classroom, you might see a film strip, or maybe a, maybe if you're really lucky, a movie on the movie projector, or occasionally on educational television. But now, with the advent of the web and the advent of many how-to sites, you can learn something new every day. And the other model of that is uh, learn something new every day. Don't wait for someone to have to teach you. So, again, we're trying to develop not only the idea of learning something new, but the concept for students that they need to be actively engaged in their education so that they can continue after they graduate. The site is also very good for assignments where you might want students to explore fields on their own. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit as we go down here so that you can see this a little better. Pull up the screen with a little more. Don't want to go too much because then we'll, we'll lose uh, track of our sites here. I'm going to try and open them in separate tabs as we go through each of these, but we'll have to jump back and forth a little bit. So I'm just going to open a couple to get us started here. First one is an example of one of the sites that's very popular called WikiHow. And you notice on WikiHow, there's a lot of Halloween ideas. That's sort of the theme this week. And also down here, you notice something very interesting, how to get rid of spiders in your house. So if you are arachnophobic and you do not like spiders, this is a way that you can uh, get rid of spiders without harming other animals or creatures in your house, or especially your, yourself. I, I personally prefer spiders over many other in, in, insects so I don't think I'll be spraying the of spiders. So that's just an example of the wide variety of things covered on WikiHow. And as you notice, I keep scrolling down here and I keep finding more and more things that you can search for. Again, there's a search bar at the top. There's also an explore button. And you can actually log into the site. Uh, you can write articles for the site. You can request that other people might write an article. So again, it, they hope to, for it to be a two-way street. We'll go ahead and close WikiHow. And our next site we're going to take a look at is eHow. And you'll notice here we have, again, some costumes for Halloween. And we have a variety of activities here with furniture DIY. And then down here, you'll notice they have a wide variety of subtopics. And again, as on most of the educational site, the uh, educational sites and the Learn Something New Everyday sites, fortunately, they have a search feature so that you can jump to different areas. Plus, many of them also have a topical index, so you can jump to a specific topic. So if you're interested in food on eHow, you can simply jump to that area and find out some food ideas. Again, another one of my hobbies. Uh, this is an example of how stuff works. And uh, they have some items on here that might be of interest. And that They run a little bit different format. This is a little more laid out, a little more subdued. They have picture thumbnails on the left, and then they have topics. And each topic has a header on it, and then it has specific items or information on it. They also have a daily quiz. Um, 
They also have a test your knowledge section. They also have stuff illustrated, which I think is sort of an interesting thing. And this rotates all the time. They also have polls, puzzles, mysteries, etc. So this is how stuff works. And again, just to point out where these sites are at, they're in the general information area. I'm going to take a look at this one called Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is actually a search type engine, but it refers to itself as a computational reference or computa computational knowledge engine. So it is a site that has access to many databases. From those databases, it's very easy to find out about different things. And they've now added a topical um, list below the search area so you can jump into the subject area that you want to jump into specifically. I'm just going to do a real quick um, comparison here of railroads. And we'll do the uh, United States. And we'll do China. Let's see how well it pulls information for me. Again, it's a search site, but it's a search site that is curated and pulls information from very reliable sources. So you don't have to worry about evaluating the materials you find. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this. And you can see that it gives us the information on how many miles of railroad are in each country, uh, the ratio of um, relative values of railroad length over time, railway passengers carried, goods carried, etc. If you would run just a couple cup countries in general, it'll compare a wide variety of things on those countries. So if you're interested in finding out something and you want to know that it's from a reliable source, Wolfram Alpha, its computational search engine, is probably one of the better places to search on the web. And again, that's Wolfram Alpha. About is a site that has many, many subsites. And in addition to the subsites, um, I've picked out one here, particular education. And you notice that you can also jump between the sites once you're on any of the given sites by going to the top, going to the menu, and then there's even a more menu, and you can even get this in Spanish if you're interested. And again, their layout is a lot very picture, very pic, full pictures, um, a wide variety of topics. Halloween, of course, is dominating because uh, for those of you watching this in the future, uh, recording this. Uh, the last week of October. So that's why we're seeing so much on Halloween materials. Atlas Obscura is a very interesting site. You would think that it's a geography site, but it's much more than a geography site. It is a site to find obscure facts. And as many of these sites have, they have newsletters. So you can simply subscribe to their newsletter, and that way you find out what's going on on the site um, currently so that you get a nice reminder to go back and visit the site. Because with so many sites, uh, it's kind of hard to remember to go back and check them every once in a while. But this is nice because they have a weekly wonders um, in your inbox. And the, I do subscribe to this particular one, and they are very interesting. And it always brings me back to the site to look at additional items. And you notice that their site has places. So that's why they call it At Atlas Obscura. And it tends to be places that are um, either from the past, archaeological sites, uh, very unique sites. Uh, notice here down at the bottom we see one Arctic Circle, Botanical Gardens. So there's a lot of different places. And then below that they have a current little scoreboard of different places edited, places visited on their site. So you can see what changes have been made on the site recently. And then there's usually a main topic, again, the Halloween theme. Uh, and then they have some other facts on civilization. So it's not only a fact site, but it's a place site, hence the name Atlas Obscura. There's a large number of other additional general sites, and we can keep going through all these, but we'll run out of time very quickly. So I really encourage you to visit some of these sites on your own. If we move over to the right side of the right column, you'll notice that we have um, a lot of science materials. Tinker Lab, which has some good information for students. Um, science experiments, science kids, science underground. So you notice that we have a very wide variety of science sites, both general sites and specific sites, on, such as Ask an Astronomer. 
Science Friday is a radio program. We're going to open it up here real quick. And it's nice because it's you can listen to the podcast from the radio radio program, or you can listen to it live if you have a local NPR station in, in your area that carries it. But the most interesting thing for us is the fact that they have an educate section. In the educate section, they often have how-tos, and they also often have lesson plans based on the recent um, broadcast that they've done. So again, that's Science Friday. Here's Tinker Lab, and you notice again with Tinker Lab, we can sign up for the newsletter to remind us of activities going on the site. A lot of crafts on this particular time around. Jump into the science area, and here's some science projects for kids. Look like we're using some balloons and uh, using some dry ice. Incredible gro growing gummy bears, uh, so you can find out how to grow your gummy bears and get them larger. So you notice that there's a large, large number of things here available for the budding scientists out there. And again, this whole area covers science. If we move down a little bit further, on the left, we we'll go back to the left column, we have a section starting here with basically the instructables going down through Skillshare. And these are sites that are typically video sites where you can learn how to do things, such things such as YouTube, um, the Khan Academy, which many of you've already heard of. It's a series started out as a series of videos a gentleman made for his niece so she could learn mathematics. But now they have many subjects available, and the Khan Academy is designed so that it is very academically rigorous and has great content, and it's arranged in a very logical, easy to follow fashion so that a student could actually be doing a course on the Khan Academy. And it's very popular in, both in the um, United States, but also around the world in third world countries where there may not be as many educational opportunities. On YouTube, I wanted to mention a couple things real quick. There's a YouTube teacher site. Um, also, there's a couple links. First one is how to create your own YouTube channel. Uh, there's a link to the YouTube edu, edu channel or education channel, and then just a general link to YouTube. Lifehacker is, again, a very similar type of site. Let's go ahead, open, go ahead and open Lifehacker and see what they have today. And, you know, they, they tend to not only have different types of how-tos, but they like, like a lot of techie things. So you see they have an electronics part storage system. Um, and every day you can subscribe to the newsletter, and they have a main topic of the day. I think today's project was involved LEDs and hats. So they were making some hats with LEDs on them. Some of the projects are very involved. Some are very simple. And it's a very good site that you might want to subscribe to and get their um, email newsletter. So we continue down here, and there's a variety more sites, including one called Learn Something New Every Day, which is also a compilation site similar to this. They've been around before me, though. And they like little car cartoon pictures or comical um, pictures to help you learn something new every day. If we move into the center section, we'll scroll up a little bit here, you'll see that there's a large area on what I call big ideas. Um, smart every day, think, think, think big, and TED Talks, which probably many of you have heard about. Um, you can go in and listen to literally thousands of TED Talks. 20-minute um, talks, sometimes a little bit less, but always under under 25 minutes. So some of them are very short. You can listen to them very easy. They lend themselves very well to um, fitting within a class time during the school day. A lot of them are inspirational, provide a lot of good resources, and they ask a lot of questions that may be something you were thinking about, and sometimes many things that you never even could imagine that you would have thought about. But again, um, tech, uh, the TED site has a lot of information on it. And again, we'll go to the um, About section, because you probably want to find out what TED stands for. And TED stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. And it converges on a wide variety of topics, but starting with that basic description. 
we move over to the right, you'll know that now we're, notice now we're getting into some mechanics, simple machines, um, some electronics hacking, some building things. Then we have some sites on computers and coding, programming. Uh, here's a great site if you want to if you're baffled by the types of USB cables and ports that are available, the A, B, and C type, you can go there. This site uh, that's very cryptic looking is called Esotectric, and it's basically a site for the really technology geeks out there intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of nerds and geeks with specialized technology knowledge and or interest. And again, this is very similar to the Learn Something New site in that on the left we have some general tech news and then in the middle we have a wide variety of resources including uh, useful Linux websites, Microsoft support, Apple support, quick fixes, learn about your favorite browser. So again, this is the site for a person that is very interested in technology specifically. As we move further down the page, if we look in the middle, we'll see that we have a variety of news sites. Uh, news and current events for students provides a large list of sites that you can go to for news and current events. Dojo News is a very good uh, website to use with students. It's a kids content type of news site. Very interesting. Again, written at a little lower reading level so that it's available to younger students also. And again, that's Dogo News. Uh, below that, you'll see that there's a link for world newspapers and magazines. This link takes you out to a site that actually lets you search through newspapers by topic or by location. And almost all these sites, in addition to having uh, newspapers, of the specific country, many of them also have English version newspapers. So, for example, we're just going to jump into Egypt because that, that's where my mouse landed, and you'll notice that there's a large number of newspapers. It's a very good um, social studies project where you can look at different uh, news around the world, and you can see what's important to different cultures at different times. Also, their opinions on the news that's current. So it expands your view a little bit and gets you into newspapers around the world. And there's literally thousands of them in this list for you to go to. Now, for a little bit on the lighter side, we have Comics King Kingdom where you can catch up on your um, newspaper comics. And it also has nice historical things. So if there's a comic that you like as a, as a young child, uh, it may be available here. I noticed that I was reading through the whole uh, Prince Valiant series is available on this site where you can go through all of it all of it now notice on this site this is an example of an advertisement that just popped up at the top of the site and it looks quite likely that that'd be part of the site but it is not so you do need to make your students aware that many of these sites are supported by running commercials or advertisements on the site as we continue down the page on the left we have two sites here um, that are reference sites called Martindale's. Now Martindale sites are very interesting because they have tons of information, but they're not really very ornate or very very appealing to the eye. So let's go to the Martindale Online Calculator Center, and you'll see this kind of boring looking. But when you dig into it deeper, you'll see that there's calculators for almost everything around. If you're interested in doing calculations in engineering, electronics, geoscience, mathematics, agriculture, we can simply click on one of these and we get a wide variety of calculators. You can also scroll down a little bit further in this calculator online center where you can simply zoom in. So for example, if we wanted to find out about f-stops or lenses, we could go into the camera section and do calculations there. If we wanted to design a steam engine, we could find out the, the calculations that we need to do. So the whole wide variety of calculators for various items. We'll just go ahead and click on the cooking measurement cal calculator. And you notice it's not even just one calculator. It has many different pieces of information here. So it's just can sizes. If you're wondering what a number 10 can was or a number 2 can, you can calculate how much is in the can. Now here's egg sizes, liquid measurements, and a whole variety of not only calculators, but also converters that convert different types of units to each other. So again, not the most appealing site as far as visually goes, but just packed and packed full of currently 22,125 calculators, spreadsheets, 
over 4,000 4, courses, and over thousands of movies, videos, and simulations and animations. And again, for those teachers out there, simulations are a wonderful way to teach um, and a very important way to teach science and other subjects to your students. So again, that's Martindale's calculators, and there's also a Martindale's reference site. We also have something sites such as Calculator Pro. Again, some very basic calculators come up, but you can also bring up different types of calculators. So if you wanted to figure out uh, credit and finance, if we want to do scientific calculating, again, provides us a very powerful scientific calculator just by going to a website and not having to purchase a calculator to do many of these things. Right below that's a place called Random. And this is all, when I show this to high school students, they really like this because you can do things such as generate a random number. But it talks a lot about numbers and games, integrals, sequences, sets. So it's not only a random site, but it has a lot of information on mathematics. It has a lot of information on, on uh, drawings web tools, so there's a whole lot besides just the random number processes. And you notice that they provide both free services and then they also have some paid services available. But you notice most of these are free and you can go ahead and use these auto good statistics sites uh, on this page. As we continue down uh, the center part, you'll see that we have a section on the arts, wide variety of things on the arts. Um, PBS's art series, which is, has a lot of the materials that you would watch on a PBS show are available to you. And then the Art Encyclopedia, which is a really good site. If we look on the left, we'll find some personal and etiquette and hygiene type sites. And everyone always sees the mustache. So we need to click on the Art of Manliness to take a look and show you what it's sort of like. And it has things uh, such as uh, making a dining room table for Thanksgiving. Eisenhower's decision matrix, uh, men and status, the biological evolution, evolution. So you notice that there's all different things here. Nine secrets for dressing well, roadmap for the style rookie, uh, potential benefits of bloodletting. Yes, bloodletting, uh, a little bit old. How to roast pumpkin seeds. And again, as I said earlier, there's a wide variety of things here, including how to shave, how to dress, how to groom, etc. Here's, here's our shaving, of course. And there's many, many things. They have podcasts, they have videos, they have other things. And again, just had to show you that because everyone always sees the mustache and it immediately draws their attention to this link on the site. Now, right below that, you'll notice that there's also an art of manliness, the alternatives for women. And then there's TipNet, which is a women's oriented um, site. Now, not to be sexist, but it's it does sort of sort of lean towards uh, that gender. So these are somewhat gender specific, but they're very interesting for everyone. Amy Poehler has a very nice site called Smart Girls. Uh, if you've never heard of that before, it's a very good site. As we continue down on the right, you'll notice that now we've gotten into electronics, circuits, uh, radio, mechanics, mechanical tools and uses, uh, Popular Mechanics Magazine, which many of you might have read earlier, but it also has a lot of resources on the site that you can go to and follow that information on the site. So it's always content very similar to the magazine and a wide, wide variety of topics from calculators uh, over the past 2,000 years to scientists that have had a tractor being made of sound. So again, popular mechanics, a good place to learn about a wide variety of mechanical things. As we continue down on the right, you'll notice that we've moved from the more mechanical to the more woodshop oriented, uh, handyman, uh, fix your house, do things around the house, this old house, do it yourself, woodworking hand tools. So again, if you wanna find out how to make repairs around the house or maybe a new hobby, of woodworking, this is a good place to take a look. If we jump back over to the left, uh, you notice that we have a string of sites here on history. We're just gonna open up a couple here real quick. This one was just, just suggested to me just two weeks ago by one of the teachers I was working with, and it's a really good site. This Tom Ritchie site has tons of slideshows on a wide variety of topics. 
and you can go to this site and you can find a lot of materials available on history and a wide variety of historical sites so if we want to go into the gilded age we can go into that and you notice that he has a whole youtube video playlist available for the gilded age 1877 1900 so if you want to find out about that you can go there and you notice it brings you to his youtube channel where you can watch videos that he's created for um, english i'm sorry for history and for so, uh, political science and social studies and again that's the tom ritchie site so let's go back so i learned something new and you notice we have a wide variety of history sites here uh, this day in history, uh, Ducksters, which is a history site. It's not only a history site, but they also have geography, science, games, and pro and, and biographies, etc. But this has today in history. It has archives of history, and it's sort of a fun site uh, to visit. We sort of got out of our page. Let's jump back into learn something new and scroll back down again. Again, we're on the left side, going through a wide variety of history. Uh, history, hyper history online, a uh, very interesting site, very graphically oriented site that you can jump between a variety of topics by clicking on a variety of links on the side here. And then at the bottom, there's also information on different areas that you can go into. And again, that's the story of history. Now, unfortunately, you're just going to have to explore some of these sites so you find out the benefits of how well it matches you. Uh, this is a very good site. Again, this is a teacher-created site, Mr. Don's site for teachers, for kids and teachers. And it's basically um, a very, very, very involved history, archaeology, um, social studies. And again, he has a lot, of, a lot of different areas he covers. And I'm sure that many of you that teach uh, social studies may find a lot of these sites very helpful. Um, this is a site where I've been collecting information myself and curating it. And again, it's a list of sites that are going to be available where you can do virtual field trips. And again, just getting started, going to have a whole lot of art museums, historical sites, etc., where you can go to. So this is still a work in progress, this particular page, um, but it's available. Let's jump over to the right again. You notice that we have... Um, below our arts we go into a literature writing uh and classics area so if you're interested in, in the bartleby site it's a great place to find books online it's also a great place to find uh references to a variety of quotes quotations who said that um so it's a very good site for those of you who are budding authors or who are t involved in teaching language arts Again, that's Bartleby.com. Great books online. And there's a lot of books available for free on the site that you can read. Um, if you continue down, there's a whole section on English language and usage, Greek mythology, uh, a, whole, a whole page on literature, classics, music, and drama. And again, it's a giant list in itself. So once you get through the other list, you can jump into this entire list. And you notice at the bottom, we have a lot of information here on radio and television, the history of radio and television. So if you want to find out about your favorite programs from now in the past, it's a good place to look for them. Um, after we get through the section on um, writing, we have some uh, information on uh, definitions, dictionaries, uh, Google Scholar, which is one of the Google search engines that searches scholarly materials. I love the free dictionary. If you've never used the free dictionary before, it's really nice because you can search for a, a word and you can get a variety of things. You can get a pronunciation of the word, Railroad. which you may or may not hear. Railroad. And you can hear it both in British and U.S. English. You notice we have definitions for a variety of things. We have a thesaurus for each of the different word types. We have translations and we have references in classic history. We have places that it's mentioned in. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do in uh, the free encyclopedia. There's also a free medical and uh, dictionary, legal dictionary, fiscal, financial dis 
dictionary and a whole second section on acronyms and idioms so really interesting place for you to find information is the free dictionary you can also install an extension that works in either chrome they also have one for firefox and you can simply once you install that you can simply right click on a word and bring up the free dictionary directly from within your web browser so you don't have to go to the site specifically uh, then we get into music and we have a whole lot of music sites here um, I'm just going to do Riff Station because it's always sort of fun to do. I can't play an instrument. I used to play an instrument long, long ago. I definitely can't sing. But what I can do is I can go in here and simply type in an artist name. And it'll do a search. And we'll do Al Stewart's You're the Cat. We'll click on the play button and you'll notice what happens. It will play the music. And it will also show us the chords that you would use on a guitar while you're playing it. So here's a good place to learn something new. You can learn the chords for a variety of songs. And there's literally thousands of artists available on this page where you can go and bring up songs and learn the chords to play your favorite song. We have some classical music for students. As we continue down on the left, you'll notice that we sort of morphed from history into geography and we've also went into the Smithsonian all the different magazines available um, National Geographic National Geographic kids um, one of the things that a lot of people are not aware of is many of these sites have high definition versions of the videos that they show on TV that you can watch at your leisure or you can bring them up for your students during the school day without having to worry about saying the DVR and recording them and then trying to put them onto another under a disc or something so you can bring them in the school so again a lot of good videos available here in this section uh, let's go back up on the right because we got a little bit beyond ourselves here if we go out through our woodworking section we see that we have a whole section on bio biology uh, natural history uh, then we get into gardening we get into e-nature guides so there's a whole section of biology and gardening in this area as we continue down this right side you'll notice that we have a large variety of crafts in this section plus we also have a section called um, kid spot fun games and things to do so we have a couple sites here on games and for example on the traditional rule site it gives you rules for many many games table games traditional board games pub games uh, outdoor games card and dice games so there's a whole wide variety of site of things that you can learn about um, games from this site. 33 fun kid projects for under ten dollars. Um, they change over time. They're always interesting, and there are a lot of things that I remember doing as a kid myself uh, that are not real fancy. They're not real high tech, but they're really neat to do. And you notice they use colored tape here to make roads on their carpet. So many of them are very decisively low tech, but a lot of fun and great hands-on activities. I love this one with the wet sponges throwing it onto the sidewalk that has been made into a target with chalk. So you'll notice that there's a whole wide variety of things here to get your kids away from the screen and get them out and trying some things. Bubble wrap on the feet painting. I've not seen that before. That looks really neat. So again, 33 activities for kids that cost under $10 can't beat that um, so in addition to the craft side <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna move back to the far left and you notice we have a section for teachers specifically for teachers and educators um, we also have online courses and MOOCs massive online college courses that are available for free and we have the whole site on teacher resources that give you a wide variety of resources to use as a teacher including the PBS video series the National Geographic video series the Nova series which is excellent and available almost all the shows are available in HD where you can watch them and uh, show those to your class and again you see some repetition because I don't know where you're gonna jump into the page so you see Bartleby shows up again here as does the Khan Academy because they're very good tools for a teacher to have in their teacher resources or the teacher toolbox 
And we jumped out again, so let's jump back into it, our page again. Scroll down the bottom. And you'll notice that on the left, we finish up the left side of the page with cooking. And uh, one of my favorite things to do, but I also tried to pick out sites uh, that are very, they have a wide variety. For example, the Yemily recipe site just has thousands and thousands of recipes, and it's very easy to search. You can put in a couple of ingredients you want, and it'll find different types of food that you can make with those ingredients. Um, cooking tips for absolute beginners, cooking with kids. So there's a whole wide variety of cooking sites available. And if you can't cook, um, this is one wonderful thing you can do because some of the other subjects that we were talking about, they were sort of optional whether you wanted to learn them, but I think most of us need to eat, and I think most of us get tired of going to a fast food place. So this is a great place uh, to get your kids started on cooking, something they can continue to do. In the middle section, we jump to a whole section on math, and there's a variety of math sites, both sites that are um, skill sites where you can go through repetitious drills and learn your facts, or sites as Desmos, which is a math exploration site for um, a wide variety of, geog ge of geometry and algebra type sites. And you can also launch a wide variety of calculators from Desmos. So you might find Desmos very useful for higher level math courses that you might be involved with. So again, a whole variety of math sites here. Um, and then that sort of morphs into um, spreadsheets. And then there's a site called Information is Beautiful. This is, a, again, a computational type of search engine. But what it basically does is it shows you statistics in a graphical format. So it tries to make statistics very interesting, very eye-appealing, so you can look at things. Some of you may have done some of these before. Um, take a few seconds for this to load. You might have seen this before, but we'll go ahead and do it. And it talks about timeline of technology and gives us information on a variety of things. So again, information is beautiful. Many, many things, basically statistics and things that can be shown graphically. So it's a great place to get away from boring facts and make them much more interesting. And again, common misconceptions. I think I'm going to go back and view this one pretty soon myself because it looks very interesting. And again, we accidentally jumped out of our site. So again, we'll jump right back in again uh, by going to our... technology site and back in to learn something new every day we're almost done we're down near the bottom of our list we have a section on searching and um, I'm not sure how many of you've ever played Google a day but a Google a day is a very interesting game where you go in and it gives you a question and you start playing you try and figure out what they're searching for um, or what type of information that you're trying to find. So it's again, a good way to learn searching through a fun activity. Searching section is part of my website. It has a whole variety of things on web searching, but then there's also a list, another giant list of 245 different search sites available. So if you thought, are just using one search engine, there's many, many available. And also there's two webinars on searching that are available in this series both searching one and searching two. So we're getting on the bottom of the page here. On the far right, we have some Google Apps for Education uh, resources, some that we've created in-house. Eric and myself, especially Eric, has created a lot of great resources for you. And uh, a lot of these are available through this link that is a Spark link that takes you out to Google resources. And again, there's just tons of resources available for you very high quality resources available on the site. So we've sort of finished our tour, but remember the thing about this tour is um, we only touched on just the tip of the pages that were here. And again, you can be guaranteed that new sites will be appearing here almost weekly. Uh, so we're at 177 now, 
and I have no top limit on it. So if you find sites that you'd like to have included, please, I suggest you contact us to share those with us. So as we finish up our section on learning something new every day today, I just want to go into a few other little housekeeping details before we end. Again, from the Technology Integration website at ti.apps.spark.org. Again, that's ti.apps.spark.org. You will find not only Google resources, uh, the tech links, which has the web resource hoarder site, which we were just at, a professional development schedule, which tells you about upcoming professionals, uh, professional development opportunities, including our webinars. Also on that page, there is a calendar that shows activities taking place both in Ohio, uh, some are regional, some are national, some are statewide, some are local. So a wide variety of different uh, educational opportunities. Finally, um, not finally, not quite there yet. Uh, we have webinars and recorded trainings. Again, this will let you view any of the webinars we had. And again, as I said, you can get a certificate of contact for one hour for each of the sessions. So if your Netflix subscription is ran out, please feel free to binge watch this weekend all of our webinars. And we do have a couple people that actually have contacted us because they have watched every single webinar. Um, so we have some very dedicated fans out there. And again, the last item on the page is subscribe to Sparkline's newsletter. If you do this, we don't bombard you. We don't sell your address. We don't spam you. Usually you get one newsletter about every three to five weeks. And again, it gives you details on all the upcoming events available both online and in person. So again, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this session. We hope to see you again over the coming weeks for more educational technology webinars. We try and provide three to five webinars every month. Again, so take care and come back and join us for a future webinar. Thank you.